Welcome back to our community. Susie Thomas visiting with Pastor Walter Moss of Serve. Uh, that is the community initiative to reduce violence. Right. Is there a way that members of the community can partner with you? You oh, mentioned yes. that most of you are volunteers. Yes. What can the rest of us do to well, reduce violence? Well, you know, uh, a couple months back when we had the police shootings in Dallas mm-hmm. uh, and community, people were rising up. Uh, we got a lot of calls and people wanted to join. And um, and I understand it was emotional. But what I saw was after a period of time, some of those people really didn't step forward. They came to one or two events. So we can use volunteers. Okay. And uh, they, can, I can, they can call me at 330-309-2900, 330-309-2900. And uh, we have a community team. Uh, we can put you on that team, and you can come in and assist us, help us, give us ideas on what we can do to best reach our county. Who are you looking for in the way of a volunteer? What kind of a background? Anything? Or just anybody? Anything. Anybody who really has a heart. Mm-hmm. You know. And as a volunteer, what would I be asked to do? Well, attend meetings, mm-hmm. give some we ask questions like, what can we do? Come with ideas. Come with ideas. Uh, uh, we sometimes when we name a project or name a group, uh, we ask our volunteers, come up, help us come up with a name. If, uh, going back to poverty being something, although, as you say, a lot of people are raised in poverty and they do not turn to crime. Right. But some do. Yes. What can we do to address poverty and jobs and job well, training? That's, yes, and that's one of my, I guess, my heart is to do what we can do to create jobs, mm-hmm. uh, bring businesses in. That's why we want our community to be safe because before a company comes in, they look at the demographics and what's going on in the communities. So having a project like Serve is a plus to them, but uh, I think uh, – the grassroots level, we can per, can uh, be entrepreneurs and 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 talk to our young people about that also, and uh, give them opportunities to work. So uh, there's a smorgasbord of stuff that yeah. we can do, but it's all good. It's all positive. I love that. If you can't find a job, well, then make a job. Yes, create be a creative, job, right? That and make yourself indispensable yes. to something and yes. somebody. Um, with the arrival of Hall of Fame Village and the building of Hall of Fame I'm Village. Excited that about is that. gonna bring so many jobs yes. to the area. A lot of people have said, ooh, but that's gonna bring crime as well. What what's your response to that? Well, I mean I mean crime goes everywhere. It doesn't matter the neighborhood that you live in. Uh but I think it's gonna be an asset. Uh it's creating jobs. They're gonna build a new Hilton Hotel yes. that's gonna create jobs, restaurant there. Uh, so I look at it as a positive, oh, 100%. Gosh. The tourism yes, that that's going to yes. bring. And uh, I, I just can't even imagine the economic impact of, right. of what that will be. It's like we're turning into Orlando. <laughs> <you know? laughs> um, let's go back to the main thing, the core of it all. Mm. This is a spiritual problem. Yes. Crime prevention goes down to a spiritual problem. Yes. Um, what is being done? Are you working with churches? Yes. Are you working with faith-based organizations? A hundred percent, yes. And we're reaching out to even more. Uh, we're partnering even with the National Day of Prayer that's coming up. Um, that will be done when this is aired. Mm-hmm. But uh, we work with churches, uh, ministers, anybody, anybody, anything we can do to prevent uh, crime, we will work with people. Many children are like you as a six-year-old and so open and receptive to the Word mm. of God. And then life happens, yeah. and you take a few knocks, and somehow it might turn in a different way. How do you relate to some of these young people? What is their reception when you meet them with trying to meet their deepest need for God? <laughs> well, you know, children are the one thing I've learned here since I've been in this uh, position is that children are, are resilient. Um, they have, even though they may, they've had trauma, yes. and the issue has been they didn't know what to do with it. So they act out, and they're really crying for attention. And so what I find is that kids, given the opportunity, they, they, would, they can change for the good. Mm-hmm. 
Well, there's that promise, right? right. For all those mothers who, yes. like yours, didn't ask, do you feel like going to church today? <laughs> right. <laughs> but made sure they were there yes. and gave them every opportunity to hear God's word. Yes. It's there. It's planted. Right. And there's that promise that if you raise them in the way they should go, mm. when they're old, awesome. they won't re- they won't depart from yes. it. They might take a little detour right. in between, right. but when they're old, they will not depart yes. from it. What I would love to hear one of your stories of anyone that you've worked with who had really taken a turn for the worse and was open to receiving God's word and has now completely. Seen well, you know what? I have a young man that, that he's been in the juvenile attendance center over twenty some times. He, the sheriff, called me t- to talk to him, uh, and and everybody in the juvenile system was waiting till he turned eighteen, and they were sure. They were sure that once he turned 18, he's going to end up in adult prison. Well, to today, he's not in trouble, mm. and that's a victory. <laughs> he was there how He's many? been there more than any other kid oh. almost in the county, 23, 24 times. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Well, that would seem more like home than out yeah. of there. Yeah, he's, And yet he's not going not, to prison. He hasn't uh, did anything to get back into the excuse me, adult system, and that's that's a plus. Has he talked to you about why? I haven't talked to him uh-huh. recently, uh-huh. but uh, before he got out, I told him, if you get in trouble, you're going to end up in the adult system, mm-hmm. and it's going to be different. And so I'm hoping that that word is what keeps him from getting into trouble. Yeah, and it's uh, very encouraging to see what some churches like Faith Family yes. I know now is broadcasting into the Multi County Juvenile Detention yes. Center and three other prisons mm-hmm. in the area. That that makes a difference, Oh, yeah, it? definitely. Um, another thing about you is you never clock out from ministry. I know oh, you no. make many visits to New York to see family. Yes, yeah. But while you're there, talk about some of the life issues you work well, on. Well, my life issue, I'm a pro-life pastor and pro-life minister. I have a little booklet called Why I'm a Black Pro-Life Pastor, and I believe in ministering in front of abortion clinics, Planned Parenthoods. Uh, that's what I do. And I have a, I go pass out my book, just talk to people. You know what? I never scream and holler at anybody. No, no. I just talk to them about God's love and that, uh, you know, you can, you don't have to make a choice that's going to bring you hurt and pain. How are you received? Oh, I've never, I, I mean, I've had people scream and holler at me because they perceive that I'm the enemy <laughs> and, uh, and that, but you know what? It's okay. I just want to share God's love. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's been a blessing. I mean, there's been those challenges when people are screaming and hollering in your face. But uh, I've been able to uh, to keep my keep God's grace flowing in my life. And you know what? You have to learn to walk away. Yeah, yeah. It takes a great deal of strength. Yes, it? it does. You see what's going on spiritually in Stark County and surrounding area. You see what's going on spiritually in New York City and more metropolitan yes. areas. Where is our country right now? Well, I'm hoping and believing that uh, uh, the, the church is uh, is beginning to awaken, that it's our responsibility for our neighborhoods, not the government, not the police. We are to police our neighborhoods spiritually, and I'm praying that this will draw more churches, more clergy to really come together and pray for our communities. I know by the time this airs, National Day of Prayer will be behind us, Mm -hmm. but you are very involved with that, and you and your wife Darlene have both always been very involved. What are you hoping will happen from everyone coming together with prayer? Yes, one of the things that I'm working on with Heritage Christian School is the second week of June, we want to do a week of meetings there and uh, for the county, community meetings, and I'm hoping that we'll, we'll use the National Day of Prayer as a springboard to bring other ministries together um, there at Heritage so we can continue the conversation of the church taking responsibility for the community. What is the church's responsibility for the community? It's number one, to help uh, lead people to Christ, to be evangelists, and to also to feed the hungry and to help the orphans and the widows and the senior citizens and Mm -hmm. and i think too much we've allowed uh, given that over to our government entities and we need to be about that so that's what i see and the life of the church how is the life of the church right now how are our churches doing as far Uh, as fulfilling that responsibility well we got a lot of work to do we have a lot of work to do 
Uh, one of the issues that I see in our county is that we have some great churches, but a lot of our churches don't work with other churches. And, and so it's like everybody had their own little island when I believe God, Jesus has called us to be one church. And that's what we're trying to do. I'm trying to do is to be one that breaks down those barriers and say, hey, pastor, well, your church, whether your church is 2,000 or 100 people or 50 people, we want you. Let's work together. Let's do something together for the community. Mm-hmm. Are you seeing a willingness of pastors? Because you're right. So many churches are so busy with their own <laughs> things. Little time to get together with other pastors. Right. Uh, is there a receptiveness? There has to that? been, yes. We're beginning to see that there has been because what happens is some people say, Well, we didn't know that you all wanted to work with us. Wow. And you know what? I hear from people who are members in churches who say, We want to work with other churches. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we <laughs> all get on the same, right. get in that boat and row all those That's oars right. in the same direction. Yes. Look out. My goodness, we're speaking with Pastor Walter Moss. He's from Serve, that is the Community Initiative to Reduce Violence. And uh, in our, our closing minutes here, um, are you seeing a reduction in violence? How I are believe we doing? I believe so because the project uh, targets gang violence and gun violence. So if we really look at the target population, gang member involvement, we've seen a significant drop between them. Let's say shooting at it, shooting and hitting each other and killing each other that that has come down back to the martin center i know that there are many gangs represented among the young people that attend there but as soon as they walk through those doors they kind of lose those labels right and then they have to pick them back up again when they Mm -hmm. go outside um if they can do it inside that building do you see a possibility that one day we will not have gangs in our well, area? Well, unfortunately, because of human nature, it's going to really be hard to do. One of the things that I hope to accomplish is in the next two years is some type of a gang summit where we can bring gang members together and have a conversation about our community with them. Uh, i got some, some people already in place we're thinking about, and uh, I need God to help help yes, us with wow. that. But that's one thing in the next two years I hope that we're able to accomplish. Wow. Wow. We will be praying for that because first they'd have to admit yes. publicly that they belong to one. Yeah. That might be a little tricky. Well, we, we will tell them is you don't have to say gang. Just say okay. your group. Okay. You're, you know, we'll come up with something creative. <laughs> <laughs> your, your guys you hang with. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and we know that that starts because of the need for family. Yes. The need to belong right. to something bigger than yourself. Right. So, yeah, well, maybe we could turn them around. Um, we've been speaking with Pastor Walter Moss of Serve. If you would like to volunteer with Serve, they can put you to work in any way. Amen. We want to reduce violence in our community. Numbers 330-309-2900. Pastor Moss, thank you so much. Thank you. For all you're doing in our community. Thank you so much.